Welcome to the Milan Project's Congressional Luncheon honoring Augusto Odoni for his creation of Lorenzo's Oil in 1987 and the founding of the Milan Project in 1989. My name is Patty Chapman and I am the current president of the Milan Project. Our goals today, in addition to honoring Augusto, are to educate those in attendance about adrenoleukodystrophy as well as other leukodystrophies and also to raise awareness of the crucial importance of newborn screening. We also hope to find paths to advance research for all demyelinating diseases, which affect millions of people worldwide. I would now like to introduce Michael Schwartz, the Chief of Staff of Senator Tom Coburn from Oklahoma. Michael. Thank you very much, Ms. Chapman. And uh, thank you. It's delight. It's always a delight for me to be among friends of Ezra. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I think what uh, what we need to know is that no life is pointless. And Lorenzo lived a short life, but he lived a life that will enable others to live uh, because of because of his illness and because of of what his his father did uh, to discover the source of the illness and the, and, the, and the remedy for it. I would like to first introduce Dr. Ian Duncan from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, who will talk about the history of the Milan Project. He is the longtime chairman of our scientific advisory board. The goal of the Milan Project was to promote uh, the pace of, of uh, Milan repair. So we've been meeting annually to brainstorm how this might, do, how this might be carried out. Augusto, had the, first, the idea initially that what we would create was something like the Manhattan Project. We felt that we were not going to recreate, recreate a bomb and there was no way this is a national security issue that the idea as he had of us joining forces in a single lab in one place in the world and doing nothing but research on how to repair the brain in ALD wouldn't work. But what we did agree was his notion and it's a layperson's view that, that scientists should co collaborate more and not compete more I think he came away with the idea, persuaded by us, that it had to be a mix of collaboration and competition, and that's how you get there quick. If you all just collaborate and don't compete, we will, we will not proceed as fast as we, we, we would want to do. So that has happened over the years. We've been very successful. The Milan Project actually spread to beyond the US, to Italy, of course, Augusto's origin, Progetta Mielina to the UK, the British Trust of the Milan Project, and also to Germany. So we've had branches throughout, throughout the world. And we have meetings at various places in the world. I was down in Italy last week with my father. And he wrote a short and I think very poignant synopsis of his story, which he wanted me to share with you today. My name is Augusto Dore. I used to work at the World Bank. Until 1984, I had never heard of adrenoleukodystrophy and knew very little about medicine. But in that year, my six-year-old son, Lorenzo, was diagnosed with this rare disease. ALD, as it is known, attacks the body's nerves. It affects only boys. First, they stop walking. Then, they stop talking then they die. Doctors told me and my late wife, Michaela, that we could do nothing except make our beloved son comfortable in the last months of his life. We, re we refused to accept our verdict. Instead, we headed for the library at NIH here in Washington and started to research this disease. We poured through archives, medical journals, and experiments. We investigated the way in which harmful acids in the bloodstream eat away at the myelin coating that makes the body's nerves work. As we labored night and day in our race against death, doctors, friends, and colleagues told us we were wasting our time. How could we, two lay people, succeed where the world's medical establishment had failed? ALD was incurable. End of story. 
But we didn't listen to the skeptics. We didn't give in to the odds against us. We didn't give up. Our challenge was to find a way to prevent those harmful assets doing damage. After more than a year's struggle, our efforts were rewarded. A mixture of ole o oleic and erucic oils reduced the dangerous fatty acids in Lorenzo's blood. We called our invention Lorenzo's Oil. Our story was regarded as so extraordinary that Hollywood turned it into a film of the same name with Nick Nolte and Susan Sarandon. Our breakthrough might seem like a mere Hollywood fable, but in 2007, it was confirmed by a clinical study which was published in the Archives of Neurology, the world's authoritative biomedical journal. Our breakthrough kept Lorenzo alive for another 30 years. And most importantly, it has saved the lives of dozens and dozens of other boys who are, who are at risk from this rare genetic disease. Still, it wasn't enough just to keep Lorenzo alive. We wanted him to regain the faculties that ALD had destroyed. And we wanted the same for the other boys afflicted by ALD we had come to know in the course of our battle. It was to promote research into this disease and all other demyelinating conditions that I set up the Myelin Project. This is a nonprofit organization run by families affected by demyelinating diseases and researchers <coughs> specializing in this area. The project reviews experiments proposed by scientists from around the world. Uniquely for a medical charity at the time, I insisted that lay people and scientists would work side by side. I have learned a great deal since that day in 1984 when a top neurologist told me to go home and prepare for my son's death. I have learned that man can make his destiny rather than wait for it to make him. I have learned that we should never be passive, not even in a doctor's presence. I have learned that one man can make a difference. The story of Lorenzo lives on. I hope it will be an inspiration, not only for those who fight against ALD, but for everyone afflicted by a supposedly incurable disease. Thank you. Welcome, Senator Cardin. Thank you very, very much. I just really want to thank you for what you're doing. Uh, I remember when I watched the movie about Lorenzo, it, uh, it literally brought tears to my eyes, as I'm sure it did for many other people, to see the struggle. But at the end, it gave us great confidence in our ability to solve any problems. It showed us how one person can make a difference, yes, in the life of Lorenzo, but really in the life of all of us. How ingenuity can solve problems. This past weekend, uh, we celebrated science in my state, with the Milken Institute coming to the National Institutes of Health. And we celebrated the fact that over the last 100 years, we've doubled the life expectancy in this world. I told the story that when I was young and a cousin of mine got cancer, it was a death sentence. That's no longer the case today. Incredible advancements that we've made. We've all seen this. We've seen the advancements that we've made on so many of the ailments. And as we look to the future, there's still a lot of mysteries. So I just really wanted to come by to thank you for carrying on this crusade. It's bigger than just those that have ALD. It really affects our commitment to leave no one behind, to continue to lead in the advancement of discovery, that can help grow our economy and solve our problems, a more peaceful world, a healthier world, and, and save the resources for the type of improvement in our welfare. So there are a lot of things you could be doing on this beautiful fall day, and yet you chose to be here so that we can do more to help people.
Okay, now we're going to show um, the video of Augusto. I would like to thank Mr. Freelander for organizing this ceremony as well as all of you for attending it. I'm not in the best of health, and I'm sad I have not been able to cross the Atlantic to be with you today. But I've asked my son Francesco and Mr. Assane, the two person Lorenzo love above anyone else to tell my story today. Once again, my thanks for this great tribute. That's very nice. Our next guest is Omori Hassan, caretaker and trusted friend of the entire Odone family for many years. Omori? One year after the Odones had returned to Washington, I received a letter from Michaela informing me that Lorenzo had been diagnosed with a rare neurological disorder called ALD. She asked whether I would want to come to Washington and assist them with his care. I immediately agreed, and a month later, I was on my way to the US. When Augusto picked me up, from the airport, he tried to warn me of what I was about to see, but nothing could have prepared me. I found a motionless and emaciated Lorenzo being held by his mother, a nasal gastric tube in his nose. He looked nothing like the beautiful, precocious, and vibrant boy who Two years before, snorkeled with his father in the beautiful waters of the Indian Ocean, built, cans built castles with me in the sandy beaches of the Comoros, and also flew kites with me. I could not grasp how such a brilliant and energetic boy went from speaking English, French, and Italian to only involuntary grunts and, very often, complete silence. I knew right then sorry, just thinking of Lorenzo just to bring some tears in my, in my eyes. I knelt down, held his hand, and started singing him a song, a Comorian song. It was a song that Lorenzo could not sing. And every time when we went the Comoros, whenever he tried, he came out gibberish, and we both laughed. This time, I could only elicit a head turn and a finger wiggle. No giggling. When I finished, I looked up at Michaela and saw a face filled with grief and sadness. I could also detect, however, a certain sense of determination. In subsequent days, both Augusto and Michaela took turn in explaining to me the strange illness that afflicted Lorenzo. They both told me that they would not rest until the ALD monster was defeated. By this time, the first ALD symposium had already been held. There were remnants all over the house scattered all over the house were, were notes with long, unpronounceable words like adrenal catastrophe, myelin, oligodendrocytes, 
oleic acid, erucic acid, long chain fatty acid, and other words that I cannot remember. Charts and illustrations were hung everywhere in the, in the house. Sticky note with stick, and sticky notes with incomprehensible scribbling were all over the room, were in every room. Within several weeks, I familiarized myself with Lorenzo's complex care, allowing the parents the time to go to visit the National Library of Health or Medicine nearby to do research. At night, while the, neighborhood, the rest of the neighborhood was asleep, Augusto and Michaela would, would stay up reading chemistry and microbiology textbooks, going through the notes brought home from the NIH. By the time, by this time, there was only one subject of, of, of conversation in the house, ALD. Many morning, I would, I would find Augusto hunched over a pile of papers asleep in the living room. It dawned on me at that point that these very two special parents, ex remarkable parents, were determined to do all within their powers to prevent their son from succumbing to this terrible illness. I also instinctively resolved to play my part as well. Thank you. I'd like uh, to next introduce Julie, and I apologize if I don't pronounce your name correctly, Latash, legislative correspondent for Senator Claire McCaskill of Missouri. Th thank you all for, for the invaluable work you guys are doing in terms of, of research and educating you know, people about these rare diseases. Um, I know the, the, the senator wasn't able to be here today, but she is you know, a strong supporter of biomedical research and knows how important that is for everyone who's seeking you know, relief and answers. Um, I would like to next introduce Ann Moser, who is with the Kennedy, I'm sorry, with the Hugo Moser Research Institute at the Kennedy Krieger Institute at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. Anne has been instrumental in spearheading newborn screening testing for adrenal leukodystrophy. Anne? In summary, we have over 30 years of experience in the diagnosis and evaluation of ALD. It is well established that ALD outcomes are vastly improved by the early identification and clinical monitoring of affected individuals. The most common manifestation of ALD affecting 90% of ALD males, adrenal insufficiency, can be treated with steroid replacement, a simple and inexpensive medication. Lorenzo's oil can normalize the biochemical abnormality in plasma and brain, and thus reduce the risk of neurological abnormalities. However, it is only effective if started early and the ALD boys monitored so that their blood level C26 normalize. Hugo's dream of universal ALD newborn screening is essential for successful ALD therapies. We thank Augusto Adoni for his laborious library searches, for convincing researchers worldwide to focus their efforts on ALD, for raising money to fund ALD research, and most importantly, for his contributions to the development of Lorenzo's oil, the only dietary therapy that normalizes the plasma and membrane saturated very long chain fatty acids that contribute to the neurological disease, ALD. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce Dr. Fiorello Provera, who is a member of the European Northern League 
He's the vice chair of the AFET Committee on Foreign Affairs. And uh, I, I, I am here just to pay tribute as, a, as an Italian, as a medical doctor, I am a pediatrician, to, 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 to Mr. Odone. Jamie Cawthon, who's here with us this afternoon, is the friend of a mother whose son is suffering from adrenal leukodystrophy. She has created a very informative video about adrenal leukodystrophy, Lorenzo's oil, and newborn screening, which we'll take a look at right now. My name is Nicholas Pershing. What I like to play with my dad outside is tag and baseball. At school, I like recess, math, and art. When I grow up, I want to be an artist. We were in uh, ecstasy, I guess you would say, when we had Nicholas, and he seemed so perfect uh, that a week later when we got the call, it was devastating. I know um, a perfectly healthy seven-year-old boy who looks like me and acts like me. We have not talked about the brain really interaction as far as how f it could be fatal. Of course, he's just, you know, for a seven-year-old, how do you explain that this could be something that would end his life? I sometimes have trouble taking them, and I spit it out. He thinks that this oil and the diet, like we hope, it's like we told him, that this keeps will, him healthy. Yeah. I've described it as our lifeline the last um, six and a half years. So it's very important to me to feel that we're giving him the only thing that they know of that might help. Brian was six. We were a very active family, and Brian was skiing Black Diamond Trails and winning belly flop contests. <laughs> and um, our life changed drastically, all of us, when Brian was diagnosed. It was really sad to see Brian struggle and lose his mobility and his ability to speak and his vision. And it's really been a struggle for him. and it's a struggle for us to watch that. Brian went into the hospital in June, I think, or May? May, end of May. Uh, as a healthy boy, like walking, talking, and then he came out three months later, pretty much unable, you know, wheelchair bound. So this all happened within 80 days. To continue to spread an awareness of adrenal leukodystrophy is very important to our family. Um, not only because we don't want to see other children and families um, go through the challenges and hardships, but uh, Kathleen is a carrier, so it's something that she has to think of and will continue to impact our family in the future. It's just sad for us having um, a son like Brian go through what he's gone through to imagine other families they may have to go to something like a bone marrow transplant or something, or a worse outcome. I never knew there was a lot of boys like me. You're not alone. There's a whole group of boys out there.
Dr. Amber Salzman is currently working on and determined to get the review of ALD newborn screening by the Health Resources and Services Administration, Administration approved. Amber? Good afternoon. It's really my privilege to honor Augusta Adone on behalf of the STOP ALD Foundation. I'm deeply moved by Augusto's commitment to his son Lorenzo and his relentless drive for results which enabled him to accomplish so much. He really served as a true inspiration. His dedication to Lorenzo led to a lasting positive impact on so many. After many years of misdiagnoses, my nephew Oliver was diagnosed with adrenal leukodystrophy at the age of eight. My son Spencer was one year old at the time. Spencer was tested and we learned that he too was born with ALD. When he was two years old, he had a cord blood transplant which saved his life. Spencer is now a happy and healthy 12 year old. My nephew Oliver was not so lucky. He died at the age of 12. He died because the treatment for ALD only works if you treat it before you have symptoms. In addition to treating the neurological manifestations, early diagnosis can prevent the dangers of not treating the adrenal insufficiency that accompanies just about all ALD patients. And as Anne told us, it's treatable by taking a little pill that costs mere pennies a day. If newborn screening for ALD were available in 1992, my nephew Oliver would be alive today. My son Spencer is alive and healthy because Oliver served as the ALD screen for our family. No family should suffer the painful loss that we did. It can be avoided by newborn screening. And finally, Jean Kelly, devoted, loving, committed mother of Brian Kelly, both of whom you met in the film this afternoon. A member of the U.S. Myelin Project Board, an extremely successful Myelin Project fundraiser, and a very dear friend. As you know, our conversation about ALD is not just about the disease. It is also very much a story about the children born with this genetic defect and their families. I came to work with Augusto in the Mylan Project through my own search for answers for my son, Brian. One of our three children, Brian enjoyed many happy, vibrant, active years, every bit a young boy, blending heart, mischief, curiosity, and energy. You saw him sticking his tongue out. <laughs> um, our world changed suddenly when Brian was just six years old. Why sledding, Brian collided with a wood pile. Since he seemed a bit off, dazed, we brought him to his pediatrician as a precaution. The doctor discovered that Brian's reflexes weren't quite right and concerned sent him for further evaluation. The doctor discovered, or excuse me, several tests later, a neuroradiologist delivered the devastating news that Brian had ALD. The race was on to learn what we could do for Brian. Through the programs at Kennedy Krieger and the counsel we received from the Myelin Project, we were able to start Brian on Lorenzo's oil and a special diet while he prepared for a life-saving bone marrow transplant. The good news is that these therapies has, have saved Brian's life and he is with our family today. And I might add, is quite the celebrity around our Connecticut town. The terrible news is that ALD has left Brian profoundly impaired. Every moment with Brian is a blessing, but every day is a physical and emotional challenge. With the help of a loving family and an amazing community, Brian has graduated high school and continues to inspire people every day. While ALD has taken away much from Brian, his spirit and his heart are as vibrant as ever. Brian enjoys painting with the assistance of a hand-on-hand -hand technique. 
Through our experience with Brian and ALD, our family has formed a private foundation, Brian's Hope. Our mission is to look forward to a day when no child will suffer the devastation of ALD and no family will endure the heartbreak of watching that disease progress. Funding for the Myelin Project will continue to be a significant focus of our efforts, along with raising awareness of the disease and encouraging the screening of all newborns. Augusto's work, culminating with the Myelin Project, has been significant and important, but there is much to do. Had we known at birth that Brian had the genetic defect that causes ALD, we could have begun therapy immediately, and the chances are very good that he would be a healthy, active young man today. It is completely within our power to keep babies with the potential for ALD well through childhood, setting them up for a normal and healthy adulthood. We urge you to promote legislation to make screening for ALD standard for all newborns and take the measures that Amber has described. The treatment pioneered by Augusto Adoni is most effective if begun before the symptoms of ALD appear. It is vital that parents have this information so they can make the best possible medical choices for their children. This one intervention could quite literally save lives. One of the greatest tributes that we can give to Augusto's life work in the memory of his son Lorenzo would be to identify newborns in need of treatment before they become ill. The Senate resolution is indeed a great honor for Augusto. Those of us whose lives have been impacted by his work, his personality, and the Milan Project cheer this day. We will also continue to do whatever it takes to advance Augusto's mission and hope you will join us in supporting these efforts. We hope that today's presentations have helped raise awareness of leukodystrophies and the challenges they present to victims, their families, caregivers, and scientists. We also look forward to discovering new ideas for future research projects that will benefit all patients. We trust that this will be the start of the campaign to award Augusto with a commemor commemorative Senate resolution and the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which we also have Mr. Michael with us who won, won this award. Bob, will you stand up? My hearing, my hearing is so bad. That's why I left the Congress nearly 20 years ago after serving 38 years in the House. Uh, but uh, I still have had an interest always in uh, what we did at HEW, and uh, I'm reminded of how uh, uh, we never knew about ALD in those early days. Uh, it's a form uh, to me. Uh, what I did know, uh, I had a secretary uh, before I came to the Congress who had three children with cystic fibrosis, and uh, they all died before they were 10 years old. That really moved me uh, to one day uh, offering before the committee $10 million for research for cystic fibrosis with the rest of the committee hardly heard of before. And I'm happy to say today, my goodness, folks with cystic fibrosis are living to be in the 40s and 50s. So it's just amazing uh, what, uh, what can be done with, uh, with the research. And we've done so much uh, of late, particularly at NIH, and uh, I'm happy to be a party of, to it way back when, <laughs> and have long, I've never lost my interest, and I appreciate being here to get myself educated and better informed. <laughs> well, thank you again, Bob, very much for joining us. <laughs>